Joseph put his hand on the little iron gate and wondered whether he dared go any further. From this side, the garden was wide and open, the whole space laid out for long views, so that once he ventured on the path to the house where he could be seen from all the windows, there could be no hiding. The path was flanked by bushes cut into strange shapes. While he was hesitating, the postman came along on his bicycle. The bell was a ship's bell hanging outside the door. It would not ring discreetly somewhere away in the house, but would peal and clang loudly in the open air so that everyone in the village would know. The stories of the children of Green No were written by Lucy Boston, who bought the manor in 1937. It was then very dilapidated, though full of character. In the 18th century it had been much grander, but in 1799 the elegant building burnt down. The fire was only checked by the massive walls of an original Norman structure, which only had slit windows on the ground floor and an entrance on the first floor. The present mistress of the house is Diana Boston, only too happy to show visitors round. When Lucy Boston first came to this house, the garden was a scythed field. She started off by restoring the house as near as practicable back to its Norman original, and then she set out the garden. The first thing she did was to plant eight seedling ewes on either side of the path going down to the river. These she clipped into a neat ball, and then later created the pairs of crowns, pairs of orbs, and the dove of peace off the scepter for the Queen's coronation. Then later she decided it would be fun to do a chess set, so she planted more seedling ewes, had a little ceremony clipping them with nail scissors to set them on their way, and these became the chess pieces. He came to a little sunlit place where there were yew bushes cut in the shape of chessmen set out as in a game. There were the king and queen, the bishops, the knights, and the castles. They were all taller than himself. Joseph wished with all his heart he could live in a green castle. He crouched down to the ground and laid his head on the stone to look in at the door, which was about six inches high. Through it he saw that the bush inside was hollow. He could see into a sort of hall, neatly cobbled with very small pebbles. He felt a passionate longing to go in. <laughs> 